Okay, welcome. If you wonder what that's all about, that is our Harps Crossing Academy uh, kids doing the countdown for chapel. And they do that every Wednesday. And uh, Paul mentioned this week that down, now that we're down in our new location, uh, down on 85, uh, our, our meeting place is in the gym. And man, when they, when they do that countdown, when they did that this past week, and they, ooh, it was loud for sure. Welcome. I am so glad that you are here. And I know that we got folks from all over the place that are here this evening. And we have a tremendous, tremendous blessing in store. And uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to this. And what we're all about here, and I just prayed this with, uh, with David and the, the boys and the fam and the other folks that will be singing and leading us tonight, that, that, that everything we do here is about God. It's about Him. It's all about pointing, pointing to Him. So tonight, what we want to do this evening is point all of us to Jesus. Because the biggest thing that we can do for anyone is pray and believe that they will have a living encounter with the resurrected living Jesus, not one time, but all the time throughout their life because Jesus is the key for life, for healing, for victory. So I welcome you uh, this evening in the name of Jesus Christ. And again, it's all about him. It's all about Jesus. So let's pray together. Father, we rejoice in the opportunity and privilege to be here to worship and, and to glorify your name. That's, what, that's really what we're about. You have saved us, redeemed us. You have come to inhabit us so that our lives are all about pointing people to you. It's all about you, God. We pray that this evening your name will be lifted up and magnified and you will draw people to yourself. Those who don't know you tonight, they will come to know you. Those who already know you, they will know you in an even greater way and trust you even more. We give you praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, it's a privilege. Welcome you this evening. Hey, David Aiken. Come on, folks. What a blessing. Yeah. 
much. We are so excited to have everybody out today. And, and I, I just hope something we say or sing will be a blessing to you. Uh, I called up a few friends of mine this year, this year, special friends of mine, and said, hey, I need some guys that'll just harmonize with me and don't have to read the music. And I found me a, about six of them, and they're going to come up here now. I'm going to introduce them to you. Y'all come on, come on up here while I'm putting my guitar. We're going to have church tonight. Y'all ready to have some church? We're going to have some church. Amen. Um, I, just right quick, uh, Julie Cash, uh, Melanie McBride, Richard Hicks, Ed Williams, Denise Watson, and Kathy. Mark, what's my last name, honey? Oh, did I say Watson? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I knew you when you was just a little little bitty. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Tressler. Tressler. Her name's Tressler. And Kathy Massengale. And uh, I ran into Kathy. Uh, we we did a women's retreat together. And and I was supposed to work with the ladies' choir, and she was such a wonderful help. And I found out that girl can sing alto and tenor and harmonize like crazy. So I called her and said, would you help me find these guys? I could tell you about every one of them, but we don't have time. They're so special to me, and they work so hard, and I hope they'll be a blessing to you. We're going to do a couple of fun songs, and, and, and I hope you all will help us out and sing along with us. Uh, I hope you have fun. Here we go. Got to get going. And I bet you ain't heard this one in a while. I 
bet y'all wondering when I'm going to start this song. Is. I'm having fun and they're hollering at me, so let me play. Oh, happy day. Try it again. I don't know how to start this thing. <laughs> oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. y'all so much they have been through uh they, they're just a blessing they're just a blessing i got so excited i don't even know where i'm at where am i oh okay i just want to I, I just want to uh th there is a special lady here diana jones uh where are you at can you raise your hand i can't see are you here raise it high Anyway, Diana Jones was supposed to be here tonight, and she always comes on her birthday weekend. So I, I don't know. Maybe she's running late or whatever, but I was going to say happy birthday to her. So if, if she comes in late and says, well, Brother Dave didn't say happy birthday to me, say, yeah, he did. You just didn't hear it. <clears throat> uh, I am so blessed to have my precious uh, 
two of my precious sons here today. I wish Davey could be here, but he's down in Florida. But uh, if it's okay with y'all, I, I just think y'all fixing to be blessed real. I want Eli to come up and just mention a little bit about his M25, and I want him to sing a special song I've requested. And uh, I, if this don't bless you, then something bad's wrong with you. So, Eli, you, you take it, buddy. Here's your chair. Is that it? Yeah. Your chair. Yeah. How's everybody been? Good. Good. Uh, I'm sure there's been some uh, thinking of what in the world has Eli been doing the last few years. Uh, we, I think there's a bit of a misconception that, that I left the ministry and I started a food truck. But we look like a food truck and we smell like a food truck, but we are a full-time gospel outreach ministry. And what... what I don't want to take a long time. This is Dad's night, but um, I did want to just share. I want to. I want to give you a layout of what a, one of our events looks like, just so so it's 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 clear what what we're out there doing every week. Um, Saturday we were in Riverdale. Uh, we served about 147 people. So we have a Thursday night prayer night. Uh, this is where our volunteers come together and we pray over the community that we're in. Then we go around and we hang door hangers, which look like do not disturb, do not disturb signs, but they have our menu on them. Uh, so we hang those on all the doors. It's completely uh, free. Everything we serve, every meal that comes out of our food truck is completely free to the community that we're serving. And the idea behind that, the mission and the goal, uh, M25 stands for Matthew 25. And we, we, we're out there serving the least of these. We consider everyone who doesn't know Jesus the least of these. Um, so when we hand a free meal to somebody out that window, we make sure that they understand that that free meal represents a free gift that's freely given, that they did nothing to earn. We want to make them question the gospel. Uh, we do make a good brisket, and it's free. And a lot of people don't understand why it's free. And we're able to, to express that and tell them that. We typically have long lines at our food truck, and uh, we put in prayer teams. These teams pray over people on the spot in the line. We have gospel presentation teams who go in and share the gospel with people who are in our lines. We are trying to engage with every community that we have. Um, but we have, we have four main, main goals. Number one, so we... We, we start out by feeding them physically. We pray over every person that comes through the line. We share the gospel with them, and we connect them with a local church. And if we do all four of those things, we feel great about what we've done. Um, and there's three, there's three ways that uh, you can help us. Number one would be if, if you will go, we've got a table back here set up. If you'll go grab one of these brochures, you put it on your fridge, and just when you see it, pray for us. Pray, pray for me. I have no idea what I'm doing. I've been in music ministry my whole life, and suddenly I'm cooking barbecue and running a food truck, and I have no clue what I'm doing. But the Lord just keeps pushing me forward and opening opportunities, and it's just it's been the scariest two years of my life, but it's been exhilarating. And um, so pray, pray for me that I won't move ahead of God, that, that, that we will continue to just follow him where he leads. Uh, number two, on the, on the left side of this brochure, it's information on how you can become a volunteer. You can come out to one of our events. Um, if, if, if you ever want to come out, we've got a place for you. We've got something you can do, a way that you can help. And then on the other side, uh, again, every meal that we serve that goes out of our window is free. And the only way we can do that is through support. Uh, many of you uh, have supported us. Um, it can be as little as $5 a month. It can be a one-time gift. doesn't matter. We've fed thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people completely free, representing the gospel because of people like you. So come, come see us. We'll be right here in the back. Come grab a brochure. It would mean a lot to us if y'all keep us in your prayers. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Sign up for our newsletter out there and just keep, keep up with us. Uh, so Dad asked me to sing this song. Um, I haven't done this much lately. We'll see how it goes. 
was this this was a song that meant a lot to me when I was going through a real real hard time in my life. In the morning when I rise In the morning when I rise In the morning when I rise Give me Jesus Give me Jesus Give me Jesus Give me Jesus And when I am alone Oh, when I am alone When I am alone Give me Jesus Give me Jesus Give me Jesus, you can have all this world, but give me Jesus. And when I come to die, come to die give me Jesus give me Jesus give me Jesus you can have all this world but give me Jesus give me Jesus give me Jesus Give me Jesus. You can have all this world, but give me Jesus. Also, I might have missed it, Eli. Did you mention Whitney? Whitney's written a new book. Do you want to say something right quick? Whitney wrote a book, came out in the spring. It's out on the table. It's amazing. Come buy a bunch of them. It's called Overlooked. Okay. Nick, you, you share your heart and, and sing for them, buddy. I guess y'all, you, you, if y'all are meeting us for the first time, how many new hopers we got here tonight? Oh, wow. Thank y'all for coming. Appreciate it. Uh, you're starting to see tonight how blessed I am. Oh, go ahead, Nick. Well, God has been moving in our ministry, and I'm so excited about all he's been doing. Um, we've been traveling around church to church. Uh, we actually sang at First Baptist Church Jackson, Georgia, this morning and had an amazing service. And um, God's just been really been, been using uh, a lot of the testimony of Tanvi and our family and being able to compare that to the gospel. And, and it's just been amazing. I've been working so hard um, for probably eight months now, something like that, on an album that is finally finished. And it turned out so good. I'm so excited about it. And I cannot wait for you to hear it. I'm praying through the best way to release it. You know, I miss the old days when you just, you know, put it out on a CD and that was it. But times are changing. Um, and I'm seeking some advice on the best way to put it out. Maybe one song at a time kind of thing. Just uh, if you want to keep up with that, make sure you, you know, follow Nick Aiken Music anywhere you go and uh, you'll find me and keep up with that. And you can also sign up for our email list in the back too. So I'll keep you posted. Um, as we pray through that. But Dad asked me to sing a song that has meant so much to me. Um, I first heard it around the time that uh, the Afghanistan stuff was all in the news. I'm sure you remember that. And I remember thinking of the church uh, at the time that was over there um, and just how blessed we are to get to come in a carpeted, comfortable church and worship freely. Um, but all around the world, people aren't 
able to do that. And um, I was burdened for them. So when I heard this song at the time, it really spoke to me extra in an extra special way. And um, I remember when I first heard the first line of the song, I was just hooked. And uh, I think of what Dennis says a lot, that when we take our last breath here on earth, that the very next breath we breathe, we'll be breathing in the air of heaven, in the presence of Jesus. And man, I heard that, and it spoke to me. And then when the second verse says, every prayer we prayed in desperation, I was thinking not only of the church in Afghanistan at the time, but you know we were just coming through COVID, those in our church that meant so much to me that passed away, and man, I just thought about just the rough times, you know, and it says, every prayer we prayed in desperation, the songs of faith we sang through doubt and fear, in the end, we'll see that it was worth it when he returns to wipe away our tears. And then the last verse, uh, I, think, uh, I think about a lot of people, even in this room, the last verse talks about the heroes of the faith, and you know, Hebrews 11, I love that chapter, go read it sometime, it talks about all the heroes of the faith throughout the Bible. And Revelation talks about how we're going to be standing with thousands upon thousands upon thousands, and we're going to be singing, worthy is the lamb who was slain. And that's a beautiful picture. And when I think about heroes of the faith, I don't just think about Abraham and Moses. I think about people in my own life who have mentored me and ministered to me, many who are here tonight, um, family and friends. And you never know, you can actually be the hero of the faith in someone else's life. You can actually make a difference at your school. You can make a difference in your work. And one day we may get to heaven, there may be people that come up to us and say, I'm here because of that seed you planted. And we didn't even know we planted it because we're just moving forward out of overflow in our relationship with Jesus. And so that's what this song is all about. And um, I just hope it ministers to you, to you half as much as it did to me. When I used to go on jogs, I would listen to it on repeat, and it, tears would just come down my face. And I knew people probably thought I was crazy or something was wrong with me, but I loved it so much. And usually when a song moves me like that, I just knew I had to learn it. And uh, I hope it's a blessing to you. How I long to breathe the air of heaven Where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets To look upon the one who bled to save me And walk with him for all eternity There will be a day when all will bow before Him. There will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with Thee who died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Every prayer we prayed in desperation The songs of faith we sang through doubt and fear In the end we'll see that it was worth it When He returns to wipe away our tears There will be a day when all will bow before Him. There will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with He who died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. Join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith with one voice, a thousand generations. Sing, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, and 
And on that day we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith with one voice a thousand generations will sing worthy is the lamb who was slain forever he shall Little did I know, 36 years ago, when God spoke to me on a piano in the old building on a Wednesday night, told me to leave my job, what he was going to do with my family. I'm so grateful and so thankful. I, I just was singing about heaven, and, and Eli was singing about when I'm alone, give me Jesus. Uh, there's so many of you in the last few years are alone. Uh, I know Susan, uh, Susan Cruz, she, she drove how many miles a day? You've been driving half the day, I know, to get here. I didn't know this until before Peggy was telling me that, that uh, this was the, today. She just lost uh, Cruz just a few weeks ago, and today uh, was her 31st anniversary. And she said, I sing... Uh, uh, yeah, standing on holy ground at her wedding. And uh, I, I turned 65. I don't remember these things. How about just singing just the chorus with me just, just for her tonight? Y'all help me out. We are standing on holy ground. tell you what it, so much has happened today I, I, I went to the 
Uh, we got home after eating lunch, and I didn't know Miss Linda Smith uh, was, was sick. Uh, somehow, I don't know how I missed it, but I love her so much and found out she was, uh, they had just took the ventilator off. I, I took off to the hospital once I got home, and, and uh, she had just passed at 2.15 today. So Linda Smith's with Jesus, if you remember Charles and Linda Smith, you Harpers. And uh, uh, just, they used to be at every concert, and I miss them so much. But uh, I got a chance to love on the family a little bit, and it was a glorious time. Uh, I want to do a song in memory of so many. I mean, Gary Claiborne, uh, just so many here t today that are alone. Je Gene uh, knows, where are you at? Gene, you here tonight? There you are. Okay. I couldn't see you. Uh, his precious, sweet wife, Faye, uh, just inspired me in such a beautiful way. Uh, as I would go and see her, every time I'd go see her, I knew she was in so much pain. But she always had the smile of Jesus on her face. And God just spoke to me. I, I, I just, one, one morning uh, after I saw her the last time in the hospital, I was pretty sure I'd never see her again. And God gave me the words of this song, and I want to I share it with you this morning in case some of y'all might not have heard it. I sang it at a funeral, and I uh, kind of do this for Miss Faye and many of you who have lost loved ones, and many of you who the doctor has just given you uh, some bad news. Tim Brown, I love you, brother. And that boy, they moved his surgery up. He's fixing to have some serious, serious surgery. And they moved it up a week, and the first thing he did was got on the phone and said, Brother Dave, I'm going to be able to do your lights because they moved my surgery up a week. He's fixing to have life-changing surgery, and he needs your prayers. D uh, Tim, where are you? Are you around here? I know you're somewhere. Up, he's up there in the lighting, but we love you, buddy. And I want to dedicate this song to all of you. who are. We go through these things in this world, but listen, we know the rest of the story. We know the rest of the story. And, and, and I, the next morning after I saw Miss Faye the last time, I was going through YouTube and, and a pastor friend of mine come up on YouTube. And what did he say? He said, death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? He said, you know, in Philippians, he said, Paul said for me to live as Christ and to die. Well, that's gain. He said, it looks like to me, I'm a winner either way. And so God instantly began to pour these words out on me, and I'm going to try to do a good job on it. I hope it'll be a blessing to you as I sing my brand new song, I'm a Winner Either Way. Doctor turns and shakes his head. I just don't like these words he's saying. A deep, deep valley up ahead. It's not the way that I've been praying. Guess what? God may have new plans for me. You see right now, Tim, we may not see. But I know with Jesus I'm okay. Oh, listen, if I should go, if I stay, I know I'll be a winner either way. Amen. I'm a winner either way. You see, because of Jesus, I'm forgiven. Yes, I am. And if I go or if I stay, I know He will lead my way. 
I have peace because He's risen Through the storms and through the pain Say my life is Christ and death is gain Harps, I could leave this world today Maybe if God should let me stay, I'm a winner either way. As the years go swiftly by, many loved ones gone before me. I know someday I'll have to go. have to leave my friends and family but if right now he leaves me here a day a week a month a year I'll live to serve him every day if I should go or if I stay, I'll be a winner either way. Cause I'm a winner either way. How many agree with me? Because of Jesus, I'm forgiven. Oh, listen, if I go or if I stay, I know He will lead my way. I have peace because He's risen. And through the storms and through the pain, my life is Christ and death is gain. I could leave this world today, Jesus. For God should let me stay. I'm a winner anyway. I could leave this world today. But if God should decide to let me stay, I promise you I know this. I'm a winner either way. Good memories, good memories. This this is a, a a time in my concert where I enjoy just going back and picking out a couple of special songs that I grew up loving, and this is one of them. Now, this song is probably different than some of you harps folks have ever ever heard. I don't know if you ever heard it. I told you a little bit last year about the Red Book. You know, we had the 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 Behave Yourself Baptist Hymnal, and then over on the right we had the Red Book. Well, this is one of those kind of red book songs. Now, the choir would get together every Sunday night, fill up the choir loft, and they'd get to singing the songs like I'm fixing to sing to you, and they'd go in four different directions, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, all over the place, and somehow they'd always end up on the same note. It was amazing. And as a little kid, I just loved it. They loved, we loved our music so much that even after church, a bunch of us would stay or we'd go to Aunt Brenda's house and sing another couple of hours. And I'm going to sing you one of those songs right now where you say, Brother Dave, how are you going to sing if all four parts go four different directions? How are you going to sing this song? I'm going to pick whatever parts I want to sing. <laughs> and I'm just going to sing them. And so uh, it goes something like this. This song is called Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound is the Sweetest Song I Know. It goes like this. 
I've heard them sing he paid the price and Jesus bore it all. I've heard them sing I'm coming home and hear the master call. I've heard them sing these modern songs and songs of long ago. But amazing grace, how sweet the sound is just the sweetest song I know. Amazing grace, amazing grace. Oh, how sweet is the sound of those sweetest songs. Sweetest song in this life could ever be found. I heard about a fountain filled with blood and it washed me white, white as snow. But amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It's just the sweetest song I know, yeah. Well, it was a song my mama sang in sweet and humble voice. Pack of music from the world but you see it made my soul rejoice it's soothing words and the melodies like the rippling waters flow but amazing grace how sweet the sound is just the sweetest song i know amazing grace amazing grace oh how sweet is the sound of no sweeter song sweeter song in this life will never be found i heard about a fountain songs. How many remember any of them old songs? Okay, one or two hands back there. Uh, this is one that I used to love. Um, I used to love this song uh, when we would watch the Billy Graham Crusades when I was a little boy, and there was a lady named Ethel Waters. Now, most of you are probably not too young to remember her, but she was precious and filled with the Holy Spirit like no other. Thank you, buddy. And, and I just, she would come and sing this song in those huge crusades. And I loved it then until I went to see Sister Act Two. <laughs> yeah, I'm a heathen. No, I went to see Sister Act Two. And I don't know if y'all saw that movie, uh, but there was a young lady that sat on a piano and sang this song like I have never heard anybody sing it. I don't know how she could have sang it and not known Jesus. And I've loved it ever since, and I'm going to do it for you tonight. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadow my heart sometimes it just gets so lonely and long for him and home when I know good and well that Jesus is my portion Oh, see you now. 
If you could just give me just just a, just a few quick moments, I practiced this over and over and over, so I wouldn't go too long. But God is changing my life, and I just wanted to share it with you, in hopes that maybe somebody here may need to hear it. And so, I'm going to start with a pastor that called me in January. And in January, he called me, and Brother Tim said these words. He said, "Dave," he said. I wonder if you would pray about coming and preaching a revival. I said, Brother Tim, I, I haven't preached a revival since the boys were little. It's been many years. And he said, well, let me tell you this. He said, I've had a lot of preachers come to my church over the last few years and a lot of good singers. He said, some that can sing better than you. Some that can preach better than you. I didn't like that part, but I knew it was true. He said, but I've never had anybody come to my church and love my church family the way you and them boys did in LeGene. And he said, I've never had anybody come to our church that we, did, that we felt the spirit like we did when you came. And he said, I don't know. He said, I just felt like the Lord wanted me to call you and ask you, would you come? in April and preach a revival for us. And I said, okay, I'll do it. And man, I studied and prayed and I prepared. I did everything. I figured out, I, I figured out that, okay, I figured out, uh, okay, if I got five services, Sunday through Wednesday, uh, first of all, I thought, well, is anybody going to come? You know, we can't get people to come out after COVID. Well, we got there. They had 350 and two services Easter. I came in there. I was so, oh, ye of little faith, 402 services, over 800 people came, and every night the building was full, and God blessed every night. I did. Sunday morning was, was the Holy Spirit, because it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Humility was Sunday night, because God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And then uh, a Monday night, 
faith because without faith it's impossible to please God and how can you have revival if you can't please God well and then I got to thinking well love Tuesday night love because without agape or love we're just a sounding brass and a tingling cymbal and then the last night we had an old fashioned prayer meeting it was glorious. We put prayer requests all up on the, the, the screens the first 30 minutes, and people came early and prayed before we started worship. Because when Jesus turned those tables over, he could have said a thousand things, but what did he say? He said, my house shall be called a house of Yes. And prayer meetings are usually the least attended. Lord, forgive us. And so I thought I had it all worked out, and it went well. It went well, but it wasn't what I prayed that God would use me like he used to. God, I pray that the altar will just fill every night, and people will get their lives right, and we'll have true revival, not just these wonderful meetings. More than that, more than that, I want you to come into those services and change people's lives. And when I got home, I, I just, something was missing. And I got on my knees and I said, God, I remember there was a time when I could walk out and do a concert and about four songs in and a testimony and people would just start getting out of their chair and come to the altar. And the enemy kept telling me, oh, it's just the times. You know, nobody's going to ever do that anymore. But how many knows all things are possible with God? And I said, God, I know you can do it. It's me. It's got to be me. And then he, he whispered in my spirit. And this is hard for me to tell you, but I know I'm going to bust if I don't. Because I know you guys love me, and I don't claim to be perfect. And I've made a lot of mistakes over the years. But God spoke to my spirit, and he said, David, the reason I couldn't really bless you is because you have unforgiveness in your heart. Oh, I know you said you forgive people, but you didn't live like you forgive people. A couple of days later, LaJean gets a message on Facebook, sends it to me on forgiveness. And I, I listen to this message, and it blows me away. It was like, you know how God just prepares things for you. And I'm listening to this message, kind of slash testimony, slash message. And, and this guy, it, 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 some of the same things. Say, See, eight, about eight years ago, something happened in our family, and it crushed us. It wounded our whole ministry and our family, and we were wounded deeply. But instead of me going to the Word, I got cynical. I wanted to blame everybody. And, and, and I began to do research, and I began to study, and, and, and I was on a quest to find out because I, I want my life to count. I want, to be God, I want God to do his best in my life. I don't want halfway. I, I want him to be able to do anything he wants to do through me. And I said, God, just teach me. If you'll teach me, I, I'll fix this mess. I'll fix it. And God said, I want you to love Live and forgive like you've never been hurt. Because I took your transgressions and I threw them as far as the east is from the west. To remember them no more. Now you say, Brother Dave, you don't know what I've been through. If you knew what I, I'm telling you guys, I've searched the scriptures. We want to be like Jesus. Do you really want to be like Jesus? Because Jesus don't give us no excuses. God said two things is his, tithe and vengeance. It's not our job. Our job is to love and live and forgive like we've never been hurt. Nobody said it's easy. And it's not. But I'll tell you this. I had lost my joy. I had lost my joy. 
And for years, I, I just got to where I'd just fold my arms and I, I would go do these concerts and stuff. And, and my heart, I knew, I knew something was wrong. And you said, Brother Dave, you ought to know better. You're a music evangelist. You, I don't know. I know the devil's a liar. And here's what I know. People want to convince you that whatever happened to you is justified. That you have a justification to feel like you feel. You have a reason to be upset. But that's not what Jesus said. You see, I've read the, the Lord's Prayer so many times. I mean, we all know it by heart. But did anybody ever read the next verse in Matthew 6? He could have said a thousand things. He said, guys, just said amen. They just said amen. He said, guys, if you can't forgive your brother of their debts, my Heavenly Father can't forgive you. And then you go over to Matthew 18, and Peter's going to impress Jesus real good. You know, he's sitting right next to him, and he's saying, Jesus, you know, how many times should we forgive our brother? Seven? Because back then, you know, it was more like kind of like a, you know, three times or so. And then you could, I guess, have him put in jail. I don't know what you could do. But Jesus smiled at him and said, Paul oh, Peter, like he did for many times, shook his head and smiled. He's a Peter 70 times seven. And then he said, guys, gather around. I want to tell you a story. And you all know the story about the master who reconciled his debts. And he brought his servant in. And he brought in the one that owed him the most. It was 10,000 talents. Well, this guy that I listened to this message, he had a bunch of guys do a bunch of research. And I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's accurate. Don't really care because it really helped me understand things. He says that 10,000 talents... Is, even, is equivalent to today's economy, $3.4 billion he owed his master. He fell on his knees and he said, oh, master, please, don't throw me in prison. My family can't make it. I'll find a way. I'll pay you back. I don't know how he lost that much money. I don't know. But all we know is the master had compassion on this man that owed him $3.4 billion. And he said, go thy way. You're free. The guy didn't even get home before he ran into a buddy of his that owed him $1,000 in today's currency. And what did he do? He got mad, threw him in jail. He begged him just like he begged his master. He said, don't throw me in jail. He said, tough, give me my $1,000 or you're going to jail. Well, he got back to the master. And when he did, the master called him back in, and you know what happened. He said, I take it all back. Jesus looked at those disciples that day, and he said, Guys, if you can't forgive your brother, if you can't forgive him, then my heavenly Father is going to do to you what that master did to that servant. And it devastated me. The first thing I did was Father's Day. We had the guys over, and the girls and we were sitting around uh we were we were sitting around outside and the, the kids were all playing in the backyard back at the swing set and my heart just broke and i knew i had to tell my kids and i said guys i said would you forgive your daddy i said i've taught you to be unforgiving i've taught you to be cynical and to think because somebody does you wrong, we have a right to just fold our arms and do nothing. And, and, and I'm still learning. But this is my goal. This is my goal. My goal is before I die, every single person that has hurt me, I'm going to find them and I'm going to let them know that I forgive them. And I'm going to really forgive them this time. I'm not going to just say it. I'm going to live it. And then I'm going to look in the mirror and I'm going to say, well, how many people may I have hurt? And I, I ask you today, if there's anybody in this room that I've ever hurt you, I hope you'll let me know because I want to apologize. And my goal is before I die, before I go to be with Jesus, that I get all that straightened out. Now, I might not be able to get it all. But I'm going to get everything I can. 
And I tell you that because I don't want to see anyone go through the bondage that I've been through the last eight years. It almost destroyed me. And I feel my joy coming back. And, and, and I preached at the, at the raceway. Tim and Connie are here, uh, Raceway Ministries. And, and y'all saw God. That was the first time I preached after that. And God came down that day, didn't he? He came down. And so I know God's not through with me yet. I know Colonel Sanders didn't start cooking chicken until he's 65. I'm 65. So God's not through with me yet. But I want you to know that I'm going to do my best to get things right. But one more thing before I finish, and I done gone over. If there's someone in your life that you hadn't forgiven, I want you to ask God tonight. You say, Brother Dave, you don't understand what they did. They, molest, they mo did this. They did that. Let me tell you something. With Jesus inside of you, there's nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can't do if you let him do it through you. He is able. He is able. And there was something else I was going to say. And now the 65 has done started up again. I don't know. I don't know. It just went. It's just gone. But I want you to know today, I, I, I've rededicated my life. And I've told Dennis about it. I've told the, uh, I'm telling the staff about it. I'm telling everybody I can. Uh, first, I forgot to tell you. I told my wife first and, and, and repented to her. And then my, my kids. I don't ever want to say, oh, I know what I was going to tell you. And then I quit. I know what I was going to tell you. Justification. I want you to picture Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane. He's prayed until he can't hardly pray anymore. Drops of blood were sweating out of his pores. Father, would you please let this cup pass from me? There is nobody that's ever been more justified to destroy this world than Jesus was. We treated him like dirt. Worse. But he looked over there out of the corner of his eye and he saw old Peter and James and John over there snoring like a bunch of frogs. And at first he probably, you know, but then he thought, I love those men. Those men followed me to the end of the earth. They stood by me. They loved me. They're just human. They did the best they could. That Peter was a headache sometime, but he was such a, he's such a precious young man. But then he did more than that. He looked ahead in time, and he saw you, and he saw me. And he said, nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Nobody's been more justified than Jesus he had every right to destroy the world and say, let's start over, Lord, and I'll work to God. They're not worthy, Father. But he didn't because he loved you so very much. And that's why I know, number one, you need him in your heart if he's not. You must be born again. Dennis preached it this morning. Jesus loves you. He's just a prayer away. And number two, don't live your life with unforgiveness because you will get so bogged down that God won't be able to use you like he wants to. And now, I got a song I want to sing. And then, uh, I promise you, we don't have a whole lot more to go if you'll just hang on. But I just know somebody needed to hear that this morning. And sometimes things are more important. And, and I, I just feel like I'm doing what God wants me to do. Heard this song a while back, and it, it so ministered to me that I wanted to learn it. And I say, it's not too many days go by that I don't sing it. It goes like this. Blend in 
church crowd. I know the routine. Oh, I can list all the Bible studies in town. I watch Christian TV. I know all the preachers and their cliches. I've been born again. Without a doubt, I know I'm saved. But sometimes I hurt. Sometimes I cry. Sometimes I just can't get it right. No matter how hard I seem to try. Sometimes I fall down. I try to look strong while the whole world looks on. Sometimes alone I cry. I try to keep faith. Never given that old devil not even an inch to get in. I do worship and praise. And try to let everybody know. the back of my black Chevy truck there's a fish and a cross for the world to see and I know my God is good all the time there's no doubt for me but sometimes I hurt sometimes I cry Sometimes I just can't get it right No matter how hard I seem to try Sometimes, you see, I fall down Stumble over my own disguise But I try to look strong While the whole world looks on Sometimes alone I cry for being so patient. I, I want to call the boys up and just do a couple of three songs, some of that good old-fashioned harmony. Of course, we got to do uh, Josh Gordon. Buddy, I know you've been feeling bad, but uh, he's here tonight. Are you, you, you able to come up here? Somebody give our buddy Josh Gordon a hand. He's been kind of under the weather late this week. This is his favorite song, and it just would not be... Oh. What what you looking for? I oh yeah. Okay. Come on up here, buddy. I'm gonna hug you sideways today because I don't want to catch a cold. Let me cut you from the back. Hey, uh, where do you want it? Just on this side of dad, maybe? All right. All right, are you ready? Mm-hmm. You feel like it? Mm-hmm. Okay, buddy. Josh's favorite song. Hope y'all enjoy. 
goes something like this. Y'all have been a great crowd. I, I just want to say thank you to Daniel Neuendorfer and Tim Brown and all the guys, uh, Greg Smith, all the guys that have worked so hard up in that booth and all week to make sure that the, all this sounded good and all for you today. Would you give them a hand? <laughs> oh, Lord, my God.
everything in this world I've told you before. I pray that someday when my kids and my grandkids stand at my graveside, one will bump the other one to say, my grandkids. Guys, y'all have been probably the most wonderful audience we've had in many, many years. You're making me feel like COVID never came. I mean, this is just wonderful. Have y'all felt the Lord in this place today? God is here. Of course, there's no better way than to end it with I know what y'all going to want. And we're going to probably blow our vocal cords out. But we're going to end up, it wouldn't be an, uh, an Aikens night without Midnight Cry. And then we'll turn it over to our pastor, Brother Dennis.
Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Okay. Wow. What a glorious evening. Um, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can I ask you to do something tonight? Can I? I might, you know, invitation, it's not going to be dragged out or anything. But would you, would you right now, during this time, would you recommit yourself afresh and anew to the Lord? I mean, there's no, that, there, there, this is a perfect moment for that. I mean, we've just celebrated the glory and the majesty and the beauty and the splendor of God. And the only thing that I can think of is the most proper thing to do is say, Dear God, I commit myself afresh and anew to you. I desperately need to be, I desperately need to be every day living in your holy, glorious, wonderful presence. Number one. Number two, if you've never received Jesus Christ as personal Savior, Lord, I can't think of a better time than right now. That's right. Dude. I mean, this, this is, God has filled this place up with his power and his presence and his glory and his splendor. Uh, I have laughed and cried and smiled and rejoiced and celebrated during this time. And so I know it's been a, a rich, rich, meaningful time. So if you've never received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, would you bow your heads and pray a prayer like this with me? Dear God, wow, wow, Christians can come together and have a blast like this and stay sober. God, I want that. I want that. I want my, the greatest need of my life to be recognized as the greatest thing I need. It's not a thing, it's you. I need Jesus right now. And you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me to take my sins so that when that time comes that we were just singing about, that I know that everything's good and I'll be one of your children. I am one of your children. So right now, I acknowledge Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. Jesus, come live in me. Now you can come down and talk to me in a moment about that or you can text me and we can talk later. My cell phone number is, write it down, 678-614-3769. I'd love to talk further with you about that. God bless this invitation time, we pray in Jesus' name. Stand with me, please. On either side of me, you see uh, a tan and brown box. This is the place where you can bring your uh, love offering for David Aiken Ministry, and you can place it right there. You say, well, why don't we pass the plate? We don't pass the plate anymore. That's one of the great things that I think came out of COVID. We don't pass the plate anymore because it gives you an opportunity to walk down here as a part of worship and say, dear God, I'm coming to place my offering right here for your glory. Because really the offering time is about giving yourself back to the one who gave himself for you. And this altar is a place to kneel and pray. Maybe you think right now, I need to do something. Come get on your knees and just cry out to the Lord. Say, dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for your rich salvation. Thank you for the gathering of the body of Christ. Uh, man, what a time this has been. I hope you have a church home. I mean, because this is what it's all about. It's getting together and rejoicing and celebrating and exalting the Lord during this time. So how the Lord is speaking to you, again, part of worship, bring your offering. Place it right there in the box on either side of me. Uh, it's a brown and tan box, and uh, and you can just place it there. And then you can kneel and pray as God leads you. However the Lord is leading you, I encourage you to respond during this time. We have this moment.
It's very special for us to have the opportunity to pray over over Tim and Carissa. Tim will be having absolutely very, very, very serious surgery on Wednesday. And a huge, just pretty much removing urinary tract for cancer. And uh, so it'll be a long, long surgery and a long, long, long recovery. But my God is a great God, a mighty God. There's a little girl that's going to be running around here soon. Piper Panther. About a year ago, we started praying for her with her cancer. And my prayer is there'll come a day she's going to be running around the church. She's walking. Running's coming soon. And I've said, don't anybody fuss at that little girl about running in church because I've given her permission. I can't find anything in the Bible that says don't run in church. In fact, I think if God has healed you, you probably want to and nobody should stop you. So I'm going to ask Tim and Carissa uh, to kneel right here or stand whichever is most appropriate for them. And you come and gather around them with me, please. And I want us to just lift them up and cry out to God, a gracious God, a mighty God, a healing God, a God that the scripture says nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. And we can ask anything in his name. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing this evening is acknowledging God's amazing grace and goodness. You might not know Tim, uh, but I've known Tim, like I said, for a long, 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 long time, and Carissa too. And uh, what a blessing. I love them dearly, and what a great opportunity. Let's pray together. Almighty God, Almighty God, you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God who heals. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are the God who provides. God, you are great and mighty and majestic and all-powerful, and we call on your name. We acknowledge your power and your glory. God, we ask you for miraculous healing, first of all, that even before the surgery begins, they'll say, we don't need to do this surgery. Nothing is impossible with you. But God, if it comes to the point that they need to do that, we're going to trust you for miraculous healing and showing your name great. And Lord, we don't ask this so that we can say, yes, God healed Tim. 
We ask this so that your glory will be seen in all the earth. And you're, you're in the business of building testimonies, and that's what we want to see happen, is a testimony of rejoicing and celebrating or your healing power. But God, we know you're majestic and powerful, and we love you and praise you, and we thank you, and we can come and bring anything and everything to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and all God's people said together, amen, amen. Thank you so much for being here tonight. What a great, glorious, fantastic time. David Aiken, thank you, brother. I, I tell you what, I have to say, perhaps one of the most meaningful concerts that you've ever done. Praise the Lord. It was rich. I love you. God bless you. Have a great evening.